This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, just head on over to squarespace.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. This episode is also brought to you by Shutterstock.com with over 20 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go over to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. GAMEBREAKER TV Hey guys, welcome to the Republic episode 147 for July 22nd, 2013. We're going to talk about Star Wars. Patch 2.4 is almost here, but we still got info. Is the PvP patch all we've been waiting for? Who knows? But it's got raids, all that and more. But first, you know him because he writes words on the internet. On a site called Massively, and his name is Larry Everett. Larry, hello. Hey. Twenty toy. What do you think? That's really cool, Larry. I like you got a Star <laughs> Wars thing. I don't know what that is. And joining us also is is Laura Williams. She doesn't write words on the internet, but she's a pretty cool <laughs> chick. Hi. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Gary, really? Hey guys. I just want to see if he can keep this up the whole show. <laughs> I can totally keep it up the whole show if you want me to. It's just really hard to follow because it's really awkward. <laughs> The summer no continues. This <laughs> oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm punching out. I'm punching out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Got to show for pre-show. Just show for pre-show. That's all I got. You say. have to. It's where most of the fun. Is. You got to. And hopefully that was still kind of funny. But you show for pre-show. There you go. All right. So let's talk about Star Wars. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> the. <laughs> The uh, God, now I just want to talk with that lisp. <laughs> all I, 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 I never did that. But I actually never have done that voice before. I just kind of came up with it. And I was like, what if I just put my tongue like outside of my mouth too far? So my teeth are kind of like on top of it. What would that, what would that be like? I don't want to bite my tongue. But then I sound like this. Anyway. Tyron thinks you'd apply to be an audible narrator. I can do it. Doing that voice. There you go. It's chat cool. room is. Are you? Are you? Wait. Chat room is saying I couldn't keep it up. Is that? That's a. Oh, boom ba. That's a joke. Because if that's a like, throwing down the gauntlet, I will do it. But I get the joke, uh, so we'll move on. All right. So these uh the summer of Swo tour continues this week. So um, I know you guys could not wait for it. I can't wait for it. You can't wait for it. Your grandma's been waiting so long for it. Um, waiting in line comes back tomorrow, the twenty third, for two weeks. Everybody's looking forward to this, right? Looking forward to this, Larry. Waiting in line. I absolutely. I love it. waiting in line. I know. Waiting in line with a bunch, a bunch of other people that I could attack, but I won't do it because it's less beneficial for me to attack them. Or is it? Or is it? So it's back tomorrow, the twenty third. Yep. Laura, can you, you? Are you queued up and ready to wait in line? Oh no, I'm ready to grief people by blowing them up. That's gonna be is this awesome. really going to happen again? Yeah, are we going to talk about yeah. this next week and just like we're just going to be face palming oh, next yeah, week? Going yeah. like I can't believe it still exists. Did, did you? Oh, okay, you hear it again. We're going to go run here's, out there and do that. Here's the thing about hilarious. waiting in line this this time around. Uh, I was it Datamind or did they actually post about it? I think it was just Datamind. It was Datamind that there yeah. were going to be achievements for blowing people up. Going to be achievements for blowing people up. Now they're encouraging it. 
They're, they're encouraging, encouraging waiting they're in encouraging line and griefing. It. So, I can't wait. <laughs> wait now, like, look, I believe me. Oh, I like get my. Also, an achievement for going around and ganking people who are carrying glowies while yeah. they're collecting them. All right, an achievement I'm, for it, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn right now because I'm all for a little griefing action, right? I'm, I'm down for open world griefing, but really on the line, like the line, the Ilum line. Like, yeah, well, what the Ilum line comes from people grabbing the bubbles and then taking them to the to the pylon, and the pylon only only queues up every so often. I I think it's like two minutes every two minutes. The pylon queues up, and so you get, the, you wait in line because you got to wait for the pylon to queue up. Well, now there's an achievement that if somebody's carrying the bubbles to the pylon and you kill them and you get a certain amount of them, you get achievement points and whatnot. So. Yay. I'm kind of confused, though. No, seriously, I don't get this because what did anybody think? Does anybody think that the waiting in line mechanic thing is cool and works, and that's why it's staying here? And now there's a griefing mechanic to kind of encourage the whole thing. This makes no sense to me. We've been hoping that they were going to fix this. Be. Weren't we hoping they were going to fix be. this? Wow, Laura Williams. We quote that's the quote lazy. on the show tomorrow. Laura Williams <laughs> just says they are. They're, I think they are lazy. They're lazy. They are lazy. That is so lazy. You put in. First off, you shrink the PvP section down so that it's one little orb in the middle of the big zone, and then you make it so that it's PvE content instead of just actually going around in 4v4 groups and killing people, or attacking them, or trying to take objectives. Yeah. They're lazy. Wow. Star Wars fans just love this show right now. <laughs> now, I, I think, yeah, I mean, and uh, I really... Is this like their it. way of kind of making a joke and we're supposed to all laugh along with this? Because it doesn't really seem funny. I, 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 I honestly, I think that they don't really have a grasp <laughs> on life, what, the universe. <laughs> I won't go that far because they, I, they've got they've got really good PVE content uh, and their leveling up process is like no other in any other game. We say it week after week. Every week, we will just keep talking about that. <laughs> you know, first up, leveling PvE content. We're holding on. We're holding on so hard to that That's PvE cool. content. It's amazing. It's been amazing since the game well, launched. Even, We're even, still talking about it. We're still even, talking about even, the, the fucking uh, shit that launched <laughs> the game. We're still... No, no, even... No, even... Even their, their latest raid content is really good as well. So, the stuff that they're putting out on, on the PvE side is good. And, and that's what's holding this game together. Everything that they put out on the PvP side, however, they have absolutely no grasp on what it takes to make PvP content. That's really what it boils down to. Yet, they have, they have different systems that they're building up. Like, like their, their uh, combat systems are all based on PvP. And so, therefore, when their combat systems start to... You know, base around a system that uh, a a objective, I should say, that is broken. Then what happens is that then it starts to affect the systems that do work, and so therefore you have problems like right now with our uh, we've got an assassin tank who doesn't want to be a tank anymore on his assassin because of the changes that they made to assassins because of PV, PvP problems, and so. Yeah, and it's it, it's a perpetual cycle. What they really need to do is focus on what they do well, which is PVE. Focus on that. Gear or, things. I don't know. That. Maybe hire people that know how to build PVP. Well, that Ouch. would mean that they have to make. I mean, out. they're <laughs> making money off the cartel market. So, can we put that to some use, please? I smell something. NGE. Like here. Could you oh, imagine if the God. NGE? Could you imagine if the NGE came to Star Wars <laughs> again? How funny would that be? Of course, they wouldn't call it that, but I just kind of like had this idea of like, bam! What if they came along, just revamped the game, and all of a sudden they came out? Bioware puts out an NGE of that would be hilarious in so many ways. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. All right. Well, I'm gonna move on from the the line and the griefing because. Patch 2.4 is going to save everything. So, um, <laughs> August 6th. It will save everything. 
August 6th is still looking like uh, is good for 2.3. So that that's still good. August 6th, 2.3, pay hits. Um, any new info this week on the content or pretty much just what we've been expecting? Uh, 2.3, I mean, nothing. there's nothing really uh, new, but, I mean, I have gone in, and the only thing I haven't been able to do yet, uh, which, oh, by the way, they have PTS transfers now. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. I, I know, know, right? Breaking Gemini. news. Breaking yeah, effing they news. They have uh, level 55. You can, you can transfer your character to PTS now, although I'm having a little bit of issue, and I'm trying to talk to the guys about no. how to fix that. But, uh, but yeah, mine's a very specific issue because I was in the, the Rise of the Hut Cartel beta, which was on a completely different server. And so now I believe that my character is trying, my, or my account or whatever, is trying to log into that, that server that doesn't exist anymore. And so therefore it gets hung up. But that being said, there are people that are able to get on the PTS. I'm able to get on the PTS with my other account, which doesn't have a 55 on it, which is yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. But uh, so I can get on and uh, mess around with the content. I got in. And I did, like I said, I've done the bounding stuff. I did the. Uh, oh, actually, it does have a 55. It's just not geared up. Sorry. Um, that that uh, I got in. Did the dailies on the on the new planet. I uh, and I can if anybody wants to. I'll be available to do the uh, flashpoints as well on the PTS. I would really like to get in there and do those because those are supposed to be pretty cool as well. Me too. Yeah. What about, um? So, you talk about the, 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 the bounty contract. So August 13th is the target date for the bounty contract week. Um, I, got, I mean, looking at this, it sounds actually like a really cool concept. Um, I hope they do a good job with it. It was really fun when I played it on the PTS, and I think that people are really going to enjoy it as an event. Um, it's short, and but it, they did say that it's going to be a reoccurring monthly event, so if you miss it one month, it'll come back the next one. Um, yeah, I just I thought it was a lot of fun. It was really good XP for people who are leveling up, uh, and kind of a nice break from Planet Quests or um, Black Points or War Zones. The other, uh, the, the, the really, really big news this week, the, the, it's just, the, the big news is that BioWare have moved October to summer. I don't know how yes. they've done it. Larry, I, I don't, how did they College do it, kids, Larry? How did I, they do it's it? It's amazing. I, it's, it's, it's incredible. But, they just moved you know, it. Everybody that's, in, everybody that's in college, you don't have to start school until October now. Because yeah. you can tell them, just, I'm on summer break. Just pick up October. Summer done. I don't know. Here so, it stays warm till October. So yeah, I can see that. So the 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 summer of Star Wars: The Old Republic continues on October first with update two point four, the big P versus P patch, uh, and we've got details, which I still think is completely strange, but really nice. Why do you think Bioware are pushing out all this information so early? Like, why are we? It was kind of interesting to see it all like kind of drop at once, wasn't it? I, I mm -hmm. found that, that that's kind of interesting. It's kind of uh, against their norm. I mean, it, it's I think it's uh, positive actually that they're they're saying, "Hey, look, this is the stuff that we know is going to be in here." Boom, here you go. I usually they'll go, "Well, here's the stuff that we know is going to be in here," but there's some other stuff that we know is going to be in there, but we're not telling you yet. You know, usually that's what they do. So I'm 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 okay with this. I, I think it's all right. I think sharing more information with the uh, people playing the game is always a good thing. And I think that's been a long complaint from uh, the players of SWOTOR is that they didn't have communication from the devs. So this is definitely a step in the right direction, even if it is Def quite far down the road. Definitely a step in the right direction, for sure. Um, so first up, a new planet, Oricon, uh, involving a short story arc against the Dreadmasters. Um, are we really still fighting the Dreadmasters? Those guys really... We they just are. Seem to, they just get around, don't they? There's five of them, though. You know, so... Well, no, there's we only four. Cause we well, one. you know, right. There's what do you... How did you guys... What do you guys uh, take... What does what short story arc... Um, do you think that implies a small planet with maybe not a ton of content, opposed to a full-on leveling planet? I mean, or it could just I think mean... I something about quest-sized. Like... Yeah. 
that was really a very short kind of filler planet, and that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of expecting that this is going to be sort of an interim fill in the story kind of planet in the meantime until we can get further on down the road. So you're not really anticipating a full on expansion. You're not anticipating like a full on planet with just like a short main quest line, but have like a full size planet with other stuff going on. You're thinking actual smaller planet with less stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah, Well, according to Wikipedia, because I had to look up what Oricon was because I didn't (laughs) know. um, It's a moon in the outer rim that was once home to a Darth Vitus. And he did all kinds of crazy experiments with Sith Sith alchemy and created crazy monsters. So since it's a pretty much uninhabited moon, that's why I'm thinking it's going to be short and quest-like. I wonder if Darth Vitus listens to St. Vitus. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know, but apparently he's hanging out with the Dreadmasters. Apparently. Or or the Dreadmasters have taken over the moon, Oricon, which totally makes sense, but it's kind of their M.O. They probably want to get a, get on board of with that. We're gonna so, find the island of Doctor Moreau. Well, <laughs> yeah, we already we did that. That was that was the <laughs> the Rackle plague thing. The we Rackle. Uh, yeah. What was uh, that? Also uh, coming. Uh, yeah. Lost two new island. operations. We two new operations. Uh, yep. The Dread Forest and the Dread Palace. Um, I wonder if we're going to be fighting the Dreadmasters there. What do you think? I am sure we're going to fight at least one of them. Probably. At least one of them. More than Do you likely, think this is going to be the conclusion of the Dreadmaster saga? I kind of hope so. It's got to be, I'm right? I'm kind of bored with oh, are you t- the are you tired? Are you tired of the Dreadmasters? I don't know. I kind of like it. I see the thing is, I don't know much about yeah. the Dreadmasters. You know, that's really what it boils down to. Is I, I just don't... I, 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 I would be okay if it ended, but I, I need to find out more about them, why they came to be what they are. Because they're really... I mean, they're... You go. I mean, you first ran into them at launch. You... Uh, on, on the Imperial side, you saved them from Belsavis. You, your character, went to Belsavis and broke them out of Belsavis' prison. And then you never heard heard from them again. Of them again. And now, through like throughout all of the operations, you are out to destroy them. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a it turn, turns it on, on its head. But I think it's I think it'd be really interesting to find out more about these these characters and how. And why are they? Why are they the Dread Masters? What? Where did they come from? Why are they respected by the Emperor? Why did they turn against the Emperor? For goodness' sake! I mean, because they they kind of did. They're not. They, I mean, we kind of got a, a taste in um, uh, uh, in the Asian one in uh, Terror from Beyond that they the Dread Masters believe that the Emperor is dead, and uh, so they are trying to strike out on their own. However, they don't really. They have pockets of little. Pe- little like pieces of armies and and uh, factions and stuff like that but nothing nothing on a galactic scale so i'm just really interested in the, that why they are doing it this way and what their ultimate goals are and maybe we can learn that in the next coming thing but uh, i would i could see it though extending out a little beyond that Maybe maybe it's gonna, maybe it's gonna be like those uh, those old cartoons with a dastardly villain escaping every time <laughs> come back skeletor <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna twirl their mustaches that's right. <laughs> um so that's a lot of pve content looking pretty good a lot of stuff yeah. um i do have to say this 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 is supposed this is the big pvp patch right this is what that was supposed right. to be it's correct? supposed to be um yeah. so there's one there's one more thing on the list right now it's a four versus four war zone arenas arenas which did we have any hints of this? I mean, that's a pretty big addition. Yeah, we we kind of susp- well, that was one of the ideas that was thrown out as to what they're going, what they're possibly going to be doing. Somebody threw out the ideas of arenas. I think it might have been data mine. I don't know. Uh, I, but that was one of the ideas. And I, I yeah. is this that's a, cool? You guys think that is this the kind of thing that you were looking for? The community is looking for? Is this big enough? Uh, I think people were hoping for larger, um, but new is always a step in the right direction. Um, I do think that the four-on-four will be fun. It's deathmatch style, Um, so that should be pretty good. You won't have to worry about people crying about not collecting objectives. Yeah, I think that's the biggest uh, boon to these uh, uh, 4v4s is that it's it's deathmatch style, that it's 
um, along the lines of the uh, oh my gosh, the Asian one, uh, this uh, PvP arena, the Hypergates. That it's <laughs> words lost. Uh, but yeah, the Hypergates one. That one, it's along that same line where you get if you get points for how many kills you get and that sort of thing. I think that's along re the right direction. I think they kind of fell short with the Hypergates because there is a very strong objective in in that PvP match, so it is really more of a a objective based map with a uh, a death match kind of thing thrown into the, on the side. Where hopefully these guys, if there is objectives, maybe it's like a minor addition to the death match, and death match being the pro uh, prominent feature there, which I think a lot of people are looking for. We're, and um, we know that we're launching with three of them. Um, yes, yes. yes. Come out with three maps, so that's that's really awesome too. It's not just going to be one that people are going to be repeating over and over and over. Um, and they actually looked kind of neat. Yeah, I've got some, screenshots, got some screenshots here. Yeah, they came from the latest uh, community cantina. Um, are these are these from the flash drives again? Because that didn't work yes. out so well yes. last time. Yeah, these are definitely from the flash drives. <laughs> All right, here we go, people. Hopefully there's no misspellings or miscommunications or they call something bounty contract or bounty week when they mean. So this is the McCabe PvP arena. Um, like I said, we're looking at at least three arenas. This is the McCabe. Um, this one here, off the bridge. This, this second one, um, I have to say, um, the, whoever came up with the, the name of this PvP arena should win an award as the worst fuck name ever because it's <laughs> terrible uh this is space garage if you didn't have any ounce of creativity when you named this one um you have new you have new a new bar has been set a new bar has been set space garage the, the lower bar <laughs> hey, wait go back to that one go back to that one to space garage yeah go, wait wait just a second that look kind of looks like that looks like an orbital station. That that's probably what it is. They just revamped the orbital station. A space bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Can we really not think of a cooler name for that? Has to be the worst, most uncool name ever for an arena. Space garage. Like, well, they had the bounty hunter we thing wrong, so maybe the space garage name is not correct yeah. either. We'll keep our okay. fingers crossed. All right, Tatooine PvP Arena. Definitely not as much fun as Space Garage, but <laughs> but you are and looking at at least three arenas, so you got pretty good numbers for That's starters. Go ahead, Lair. That one's Outlaws Den, which is already yeah. But, but you know what? That's cool. When it, you know it's a new map, <laughs> whatever. Larry's like, all right, new. it's not really yeah, whatever. It like That's Outlaws Den. Outlaws Den. It does look like Outlaws Den, right? Doesn't it? or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like the pit in the back where they put the mm -hmm. um, fender that holds the HK part. Space there we garage. Go. Space garage. Space, Space garage. garage. Can that become a meme somehow? I don't know how. I don't know what it means. Like, I don't know. It's just <laughs> so room, bad. Make it a meme. There it's just go. so bad. I mean, I hate to, like, you know, keep... Really? Come on. Am I the only one? Are you guys okay with it? Like, you're Because you're not really commenting, so I'm assuming, like, is it fine? Like I just not... assumed that that was not going to be the actual name, and that it was going to have a real name. Oh, so maybe I'm okay. That would be okay it. then. I so you assume yeah, it's, it's that so bad. I knew that you read it. You're like, there's, be what they're like, there's it. no possible way that it's just going to be called Space Garage. Okay, all right, I'm with you. Well, we'll leave it for. I mean, like at least call it like Hangar Bay. Space Garage. What do you do? I put words in the computer. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm a writer. Gotta hire the people that uh, pick out the names for OPI nail polish. I put Maybe words in the pewter. Star Wars pun. Oh, that'd be great. Space garage. All right. Um, <laughs> who knows? Before we can judge any of them, you got three new maps coming, so that's good. I have to play them before we can really judge them. Although I will. And we can totally... transfer, so hopefully we can get them on the PTR or PTS. I'm totally gonna judge them by their name, though. Um, side Until note. Further notice. No new Hutball maps announced. Yet. No yet. new Hutball maps yet. yet. That is something I think a lot of I'm people are still, still waiting for. I'm convinced that they're coming. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm holding out. They uh, are, but 
They gotta be coming. They got, you got. They're, wait, they're, you think? Yeah. Just has yeah. to. You, they just introduced all those new Huffle armor sets. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I'm yeah. Positive that we are. Going what to else am I going to wear that maps? stylish armor in? Huffle, <laughs> the map you have. You got armor. You want armor and a, a new arena? Yes. I am that needy. Obviously. I don't know. That's well, too wealthy. They can afford it. If you don't get that, at least you're going to get a Tauntaun mount. So Tauntaun mounts are on the way. <laughs> in, before, uh, in before they put the wrong pictures on the flash drive again. These are actually speeders. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have roller skates on jet, their feet and a jetpack. Jet coming out of its bum. <laughs> Are these the um are these the first animal mounts that we're seeing in the game? Yes. Yes. Pretty well, big deal. the first ones that players will actually be able to get. Yeah. Um and how do we have any information about how they're actually gonna keep up with actual speeders speed wise? We know this. That could look kind we're of gonna funny. have to suspend our disbelief. Okay. I think we might. Yeah, I think we might have to. I'm not sure exactly how they're gonna do it. I'm I'm interested to see that myself. All the only thing uh that anybody that went to the cantina, uh, the cantina tour, what they said was uh, they just gave them the flash drives and those happened to be on there and with no information at all, other than here's some pictures. Enjoy. What do you guys think? You guys think this is going to cost an arm and a leg in the cartel market or what? Probably. Oh, that's a good question. I, I hope they have some sort of quest or something that you got to do to get those. Because that, I mean, I'm, I, I don't, I don't mind the cartel market. I'm kind of a proponent of it in in general, but I you got to kind of balance it out. You know, you got you can't just. I mean, the, like the thing with the thing with Treek, I think that it, that it's cool that it re, that you can get it either off the market or or on on the cartel market. But the thing that I think is a little bit disappointing with Treek is that there is no quest to get him or her. Sorry, there's no uh, quest to get her. You just like walk up to the vendor and say let me have that bounty contract and you get the bounty contract and press the little button and here comes the Ewok. So yeah, it's just, um, I, I hope there's some sort of quest or something, something along that line to get the Tauntaun mount. You know what would be cool is if they took the, um, the gun that you need to get the little Tauntaun mount or a uh, pet in Hoth to do that and have to grab one and then grow it into a mount. I think oh that'd my be gosh! Really cool. Something if it that takes like seven cool. days to bake. I I would be just cool with that. that. Somebody, somebody, somebody that would be awesome. Is that somebody's just doing that? Now I can't remember. Tyrone will probably tell me. There's an MMO. What's what's out right now that has that? Is it it's, is it Final Fantasy with a chocobo? Uh, what? Oh, it might be. It might be. That sounds it, that sounds right. You actually. might have to do that. Yeah, you might have to do something like that with your chocobo in in Final Fantasy. Yeah. 14. I can't remember. Well, hey, and everybody can take a drink. Uh, in the late in. In Star Wars Galaxies, they did that exact same thing. You had to grow your pet. You had to grow your mount. Grow Everybody your pet. Drink. Everybody drink. All right, I want to talk more about the big <laughs> PvP batch. First, I want to tell you guys about Squarespace. Squarespace.com. You need to go there. You need a website. You need a website. Your guild needs a website. Your mom needs a website. Your grandma needs a website. Everybody needs a website in 2013. And not a janky-looking website. You need a good, modern-looking website. There's no reason not to have a good-looking website. Squarespace makes it so easy to have a great looking website. You don't even know how to, you don't have to know how to code anything like that. You just go over, go to squarespace.com, sign up, make an account and whatever you got to do guild websites. You want to uh, post maybe your YouTube videos. Uh, maybe you have a store. Maybe you want to sell online stuff. You just go over, you select a template, you start a free trial. You're going to get a free domain as well. There's something I, I don't talk too much about is that you actually get all your domains on Squarespace and your hosting is like a part of the Squarespace package as well. So they make it super easy. You don't have to like, you know, cobble like different, different providers together and stuff. You just go to Squarespace and it's all there right there for you. So you select a template to get started, all kinds of good templates for different purposes. They kind of break them up here for you. So they got like recommendations, like, you know, if you're a business or maybe you got a portfolio, like a photographer, maybe you want to do screenshots. Maybe you want to do like, you know, a gaming portfolio. Uh, if you do a blogging, like stories kind of stuff, maybe you have a restaurant or just, you know, personal, it'll look like personal it kind of tells you like, Hey, these, these might be some good choices. I love this aviator theme. Um, really cool. Like full, uh, it's got like that full sort of like, uh, image background to it 
with the overlaid uh, nav. Look at how cool that is. Semi-transparent stuff. So all this stuff is just super easy. And you go in the back end, you swap out this background image. Maybe you put a Star Wars image back there or something for your guild and kind of change, you know, the name, the titles. They make it super, super easy to change all this stuff too. That, that's the great thing about Squarespace. You, you don't have to know how to code any of this stuff. You can just go in and, you know, this one is obviously set up with a menu item to sell things and stuff like that for a restaurant. But you could easily change that and swap the menu out for different things and make different sections. Um, all their social abilities are all right in here for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all that kind of stuff. So they make it really easy to share your stuff, post your YouTube videos. Um, and there's a bunch of different designs here. Uh, this one I like a lot. I like that one and I really love, um, I love this one here, this five one. It's kind of a, it's still got that full live, uh, that full wide image. It's just got just really good looking stuff. I mean, you just swap this out. Like I said, you've got a really great nav, modern text and typography. There's really no, no reason to have a, a, a terrible looking website with Squarespace. Um, chat if you have a chat room says that, that Mr. Uh, Peter Peanut Butter von Mulchenstein needs to have his own website. See, be a good there you go. Your, your child <laughs> does need a website. I want to save you guys 10% off. All you got to do is go to squarespace.com, sign up, make a new account, and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. It's GAMEBREAKER with a number seven. Got to use that as the promo code, and you're going to save yourself 10% off. Love, love, love the Squarespace. Check it out today. Check it out, squarespace.com, offer code GAMEBREAKER7. All right, so uh, we've been talking about the PvP patch, the big PvP patch, and we're not the only ones apparently concerned about the big P versus P patch. Uh, Eric Musco had to jump over on the forums uh, and he responded to concerns over the PVE content that is coming in the PVP patch. And he said, I'm getting that some of you are frustrated that there are also operations coming in 2.4 as a PVP player. This is no way, this is in no way taking away from the content you are getting. It just means that on top of being an update with PVP content, it also has PVE content and content in it as well it's just a bigger update for everyone 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 um i got I got chocolate I gotta, in my peanut butter that's what i'm wondering so <laughs> I, it's kind of a weird thing right because it's hard to support people really getting mad about more content and having a patch that has pve content in the pvp patch but i have to say on the other hand i i didn't and i didn't think about this until i saw this response is that the way 2.4 was being positioned as the PVP patch for some reason, again, I, totally just psychologically, my brain literally, even my, I, I thought it was literally only going to be a PVP patch. And I don't yeah. know why my brain thought that, but it just did. And I just kind of thought 2.4 is going to be like the PVP flood. Here it is. It's, it's for them. It's, Called the PVP patch, we're calling it that, and everybody's going to be happy. And it's going to fix everything. Now, I guess shame on me for thinking that as well. But then I, I, I know when the news hit Twitter, I immediately started getting tweets by people going like, "Oh my God, there's all this other PVE stuff in my PVP patch, and I'm angry about it." So I don't know. Where do you guys stand on this? I mean, it's something really get angry at more content, or do you feel like? I think, I think that more content is never a bad thing but on the other hand i can certainly understand where pvpers would be very upset they literally have not had any content for them for almost 10 months i mean that's that's a really long time and little fixes here and there do not count as having new content their last content update was the hypergate warzone app I, november I just, that was in november yeah, no, so what do you yeah, see? So are you sort of insinuating that like they kind of do deserve and the one patch that's just PvP and that was it and like just packed to the brim for them? Well, yeah, yeah. Actually, I guess I kind of do. <laughs> um, I that's what they've been billing this is for months now. They've been saying the two point four PvP. There's big changes to PvP, and when they gave the preview of it. Yes, there was something for PvP, but then they also announced a whole bunch of other PvE. And if... Uh -oh. Music. I was music. playing... So... There we go. 
<laughs> All right, she's back. <laughs> she's catching up. I'm doing music. Bio, I'm, I'm just doing like you know. Bioware shut her, please, shutting her down. Hold. They're killing her internet. <laughs> she's she's telling the truth. <laughs> I mean, so here I'm gonna play, I'm gonna try and try and play both sides of this for a second and, and figure out like why 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 PVPers are sort of angry at this because I guess the first thing I would think of as a PVPer and this is again I'm not saying this is this is fact I'm not saying this is like the reality of it but having the PVE content in this patch which everybody's kind of been hyped up and kind of thinking is going to be a full on PVP patch the first thing I guess I'm I could see a lot of players um, misconstruing it to some extent and kind of twisting it is that. Well, there really isn't that much PvP content to this patch, so we basically got to jam PvE stuff in there. So they're really not doing that much for us, and this would have looked super light if they would have just released just this PvP stuff, and it wouldn't have been like that big. So they got to put more into it. Is that? Do you think that that's where people are kind of going with this? I'm gonna watch chat room. You guys tell me chat while you Larry talks and makes words. <laughs> I, I, I think that, that I think that that's kind of part of it because uh, I, I think that that perception is part of it. However, I I don't think that's the reality of it i think the reality of as far as that part of it is concerned is that uh bioware is working on more than just what they've released so far i don't think we're going to see just arenas and i don't think it's necessarily going to be a light pvp patch i think it's going to be pretty decent content as far as the pvp side is concerned and then we're getting some pve stuff as well that being said, I think that they do have a point. Like Laura was was saying, is that I think that um, I and like you said as well, is that I think I was kind of geared up for this to be pretty much all PvP. If they were going to add any PVE stuff, it was going to be like maybe a flashpoint or maybe a daily area or something like that to just kind of throw the PVE guys a bone or something. But, but no, no. They act, it's it's more than that. But now, so so Charum kind of saying the same thing. Like you're saying, yes, inflated expectations, you know, and and of them kind of using the terminology of PvP patch. But we do have to say, there, we don't know of everything in the patch yet. Like we right. still don't know. There there could be more PvP stuff coming. So we have to kind of keep that in consideration. As far as like, hey, maybe this isn't everything. Yeah, I, I'm keeping an open mind about it, but I definitely understand where these guys are coming from. And another situation, and I know that there, this is, blurs the line a little bit of how production is done in, in games, but um, it, it does, when, when you have this scale of PvE content, it does mean that those particular developers are not working on PvP content. So, and I know not everybody, I know they both, not all developers in a, in a PV uh, that work on PVE can work on PVP and vice versa, but it does mean that there is different allocation of resources, and so yeah, it it does it does mean a little bit like maybe okay it, okay best case scenario the PVE guys were just done super fast. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, Larry went there. Uh, Laura, where are you on? Where do you stand on this? I mean, as far as like uh, kind of inflated expectations, do you think that's partially what's going on here? Um. Well, I mean, it, it's been billed as the PvP patch. That's what they said. Big changes coming in 2.4 for PvP. And I honestly, I don't think that people would have been in so bent shape about PvE coming into the game if they had announced more than just the four versus four arenas. If they had said we're doing, like, we're going to address ranked and we're creating these new arenas and there's definitely going to be three maps because until the three maps came out, people were literally having a shit fit that it was just going to be four versus four and one map. And then Dolphy came out with, oh no, here, there's going to be three maps. And everyone was like, okay, so we're kind of mollified by that. But yeah, I mean, the other, the I, other problem here, though, like people... to, ultimately, though, is Bioware like in a corner? Like they, they really can't win here because if there was no PVE content, those guys would probably be saying something. Don't you think the PVEers would speak up as well, or you think they would have let it slide and been like, "All right, we got it. You guys didn't get nothing, but just you know, it's okay." Uh, I personally would probably not have complained if there was a patch that came out that was just simply straight PVP and no PVE. 
simply because yeah, I, I guess, know that it's been I guess the big question here the big question anything. I think is going to be really what happens post 2.4 you know, like, does, do the PVPers wait, like, you know, months and months again for more updates and new content? Or, you know, do they start sort of working in more PVP updates and changes and things like that into every single patch? So it's kind of a balance between PVE and PVP. I kind of don't see that happening. Well, I don't see that happening, but it would be nice if they did. I mean, I don't, for people that want to do that, I don't feel like they should have to wait almost a year to get new content. Uh, well, if Eric, it was reversed, Eric, I would be having a fit. If it had been a year since you wouldn't be playing a new flashpoint. Yeah, I wouldn't be playing. I would have moved yeah. on to another game. Yeah, and and she actually she actually hits on something because she said flashpoint because the equivalent of these maps that they've that they've given us so far is the equivalent really of a flashpoint. We're not talking about extensive content. It's not to the the content to make a. I know there's uh, it, it's a little more intricate because it's a pvp map and you want to make sure that everything there's no way to exploit certain situations within a pvp map so there's some testing going on as far as that's concerned internally and but that being said it is equivalent to getting a flashpoint whereas the pv on the pve side we have gotten raid level content amazing raid level content nonetheless and gotten zero on the pvp side I, I there's still there still has to be, and which has not been announced yet. There still has to be some PvP content that is equivalent to getting raid content in this patch that has not been announced yet. And that I think is if if I, if I were to quantify why I ha am a little upset about this situation is because of that. There, this uh, the arena stuff, great. They're awesome. It's like getting a flashpoint, but it's definitely not as uh, it's not equivalent to getting new raid content on the PVE side. All right. Well, Eric, uh, Eric's got some more words to say. I'm going to stop and plug this. If you guys are playing cube world. You got to go to cube nation.tv. That's all I'm going to say. Brand new site just launched today. Open for business cube nation.tv. Go. All right. <laughs> Tell your friends. All right, so Eric continued with this. He said, spe to specifically address some of the concerns I am seeing in the thread. First, the 4v4 Warzone arenas are not scaled down versions of the current 8v8 maps. They are brand new Warzone. They are a brand new Warzone type deathmatch on their own brand new maps. Note plural. You will see more than one map at launch. Um, so that's good news. At least okay. multiple maps. Uh, he finished with this. He said, as some have said, this is not the only thing coming in 2.4. We have stated before in this thread, the purpose of this is going to give you an overview. It does not have every detail. Some of uh, your other concerns, such as queuing for ranked, will be addressed along with 2.4. We are still working on details, and 2.4 is still a ways off. We will continue to release information as we lock things in. So, again, fair enough. This is an overview. We do not know if this is all the content going into the, you know, it's for PVPers. So maybe everybody can just calm down a little bit. We'll just kind of, we'll take a chill pill. We'll wait. And we'll when, see he what happens. Four P, when he says four v PVPers, he doesn't mean the number four. Although yeah, that not the number four. That way too. <laughs> I mean, for overall, all for a patch, just looking, if, 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 <laughs> taking, taking the whole, you know, PVP versus PVE and all that aside, it doesn't look like a bad patch. It looks pretty like a pretty solid patch when you look at it as a whole, doesn't it? No, it does. It looks like yeah, it's going to be absolutely. a great patch. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited for it. But what about rank? Does rank need to be a really big focus? I mean, is that what PvP peers are looking for right now? There are a lot of people looking for mm -hmm. rank or some clarification about what's going on with it, if it's being removed, if they're going to do anything with it. Because right now, it's. I mean, we're still in pre-season one. Really? Yeah. Now, the other thing uh, I know everyone is looking for in 2.4, uh, Larry, uh, this just in uh, chat bubbles and sitting in chairs are only coming into PvP. Like, that's it. You can <sighs> you can chat and you could sit in PvP matches. So that's coming in 2.4 as well. Uh, so if you, if you guys are a fan of the parse, uh, you might want to prepare for cold turkey. So... Um, for those who may not know what this is, Tor Parse, 
what exactly is it? It's like it's Swotor's makeshift version of a damage meter, basically, is how I will sum it up in like three words, correct? Yep, that's pretty close. Yeah. Is it widely used? Well, it's it's funny when, uh, when I was reading the patch notes about it. I mean, I, I didn't realize it was shutting down and, until the, the, the notes uh, because uh, we use Mox. Yeah. <laughs> We use Mox Parser, and, uh, and yeah, so, I mean, I think that, I mean, it, it's, it's bad that it's shutting down because these guys are, you know, a, a staple, if not, you know, uh, um, in the Tor community, but uh, there are others out there. That All right, so there's alternatives. The like I said, the bad news yeah. is uh, the creator is moving along. Uh, it's going to be stopping development. Um one thing I wasn't sure about is like I guess maybe maybe it's not I don't I don't know the popularity of it. I was wondering why possibly they're not like you know uh, releasing the code to let someone else kind of take over the work, which is what happens to a lot of these yeah. things. I mean, maybe that's not an option. Maybe that is an option. I I don't really know. Um, but yeah. I think I, I, is is Mox pretty much the go-to. Well, the the thing with the thing that is different between. I, I would say the primary difference, although there is definitely other significant differences as well, but the, the, the primary difference is, with uh, Tor Parse is, uh, is just that it's prettier. It is definitely better looking. It mixes, it blends in better with your, uh, your UI and that sort of thing. Uh, it's, but, uh, however, it does still employ the same principles that, that uh, let's say, like Mox's Parser does. Is it just is an overlay? It basically you set it as always on top, and you run uh, Tor in Windows, and there it is it's in windowed mode, and it, it's there. So yeah, um, and I'm uh, I'm watching chat room right now, and it looks like I did not confirmed, uh, but somebody in chat room is saying that it is being taken over by somebody. So that's a possibility. Yeah, he posted so got- something on his on his blog saying that there's somebody in the works that's okay. Uh, there you go. Going Perfect. to be handling it. Cool. So. That makes much more sense because we, we brought that up as a story because I was like, you know, I want to let everybody know that, hey, this is probably shutting down. You might want to find an alternative. But now maybe you don't because it sounds like somebody's going to take Because Actually, the forum uh, people out in the thread actually started uh, asking BioWare to step in and take over yeah. on this, mm-hmm. which is like, uh, I mean, I guess that's not going to happen. That's not really surprising. But I don't know. Do you, do you think BioWare at this point should sort of implement some sort of damage meter into their own game, or just leave I, it? I don't. I don't think that. Okay, I don't personally think that they need to put any kind of damage meter or something like that into their game. However, what they do need to do, which other games that are coming out this year and possibly the beginning of next year are going to have uh, things built into them where you can add you can add add-ons uh, and Tor should. At this point, you should be able to have add-ons to it. It's it, it's in. It, I mean, I, at, at the beginning, I I would have said no. You don't necessarily need need to have add-ons and that sort of thing because you know we don't we didn't have a combat log. We didn't have a whole bunch of other stuff. But now we have a combat log. Uh, raids are getting tighter and tighter. It's getting harder and harder. It's you know you you've got to be more on your game. You got to have your uh, DPS has to be higher. Your, you know, your healing has to be higher. You have to be, with, you have to know exactly what you're doing at any given time and where you're falling short. And the and the best way to do this is through these kinds of add-ons. And it, and yeah, um, for Tor not to support them is, silly. I think it's detrimental and silly. Yeah. Especially at this like point in the uh, in, in its yeah. life cycle, right? Like modding and exactly. add-ons could really kind of like breathe some new life into some of the stuff that's going on. And like you, you know, not to say it's going to be the same thing, but you know, you look at games like Skyrim stuff. I know, totally different game, not an MMO. I get it, I get it. Right, right. That's stupid, but you know, that keeps like longevity. Like people start creating yeah. things that like do new things and like keeps people interested and involved. So I, I, I think the entire community would probably welcome. Uh, if, well, if the Bioware team he, would allow and support this, you mentioned Skyrim. Well, uh, they've uh, the ESO team, Zenimax, has already already said that they are going to support UI add-ons. Oh yeah, so it's Wild yeah, Stars, so, inclu- Wild Stars, including the tool with the I, game. Yeah, exactly. So the these other games that are coming out are already coming with those features with uh, with add-on. Fe- not, 
I don't know that they're making the add-ons, but they are. No, they're giving you the tool set. They're, they're, they're supporting. Yeah. I mean, Wildstar is giving you the tool set. Speaking yeah. of Wildstar, Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet live every Monday at three PST right here on Gatebreaker TV. Our Wildstar show. So, uh, all right, let's do some viewer questions. Viewer questions this week are sponsored by Shutterstock. If you guys not checked out Shutterstock, we just talked about getting a new website. We just talked not that long ago about getting a new website. You need a new website. You got to make it look awesome. And I showed you some of those things where you had to talk about it, like swapping out the pictures and stuff. Well, this is where you do. You go to Shutterstock. So going with our sci-fi theme, let's just look at some stuff. I, oh, I just looked up sci-fi and I thought, you know, you know, I just showed you the, uh, the Squarespace and, you know, you want to change out those backgrounds and those images. Well, this is where you get some awesome artwork that's licensed and you're allowed to actually use. You're not stealing stuff on Google because you don't want to do that. Um, I'm just going to kind of poke around here. All right. First of all, look, that is awesome. Like, I wish I could make, let me see if I can make this larger. Like, uh, this is the first thing I clicked on. All I searched for was sci-fi. I mean, what awesome concept art that's licensed that you could use for your website and completely use, uh, you know, for your guild or a sci-fi site, whatever you got to do. Um, all kinds of stuff, cool corridors, just different kinds of sci-fi elements. Um, we use Shutterstock here at GameBreaker.tv. Seriously, no joke, every single day. That's pretty cool. Like how much, uh, that piece of artwork right there, if you wanted to use that on your website, like if I had to commission an, uh, an artist to draw that, you're talking, you're talking at least probably four or 500 bucks for somebody at that level. And like with maybe two revisions, like that's kind of how you'd, you, I think, yeah, you'd be lucky. You can't beat Shutterstock. I'm telling you, they they have different uh, pricing models for for every everything you could possibly need. Um, we're working. We like I talked about before this Cube Nation site. We just launched this today. We use Shutterstock for all kinds of stuff. I'll point a couple little things here. I'm not going to go too into, but see all these little icons and stuff that we've put in, like this little microphone, and then we've got like uh, well, it's the microphone again. Uh, this little wrench, all these little icons, all that stuff is from Shutterstock. Needed eight bit looking uh, icons. I searched eight bit vector icons and found a gajillion of them to choose from from all different designers with all different looks you go like oh wouldn't they, wouldn't they all look the same no there's like different artists different ways that they even do like 8-bit stuff and that's pretty much where we found all of that stuff all those little things so you'll find on all of our websites across all of them uh using tons of stuff like that uh i want to save you guys 30 percent off i don't know how long this like is going to last because seriously this is the most shutterstock has has ever given off uh, for Shutterstock, it's 30%. All you got to do is go to Shutterstock.com, make a new account, and use the promo code GAMEBREAKER7. Got to use that account, uh, promo code GAMEBREAKER with the number 7. Save yourself 30% off and uh, get to building that website. And it's going to look awesome after you find some really cool stuff over on the Shutterstock. All right, so let's do some viewer questions. Uh, we do the viewer questions every day week. If you have a question for the Republic Crew, you can send it to submit at GAMEBREAKER.TV. And we don't get enough video questions, people. Video, video, video questions. We love video questions. Record yourself on your webcam. Post it up on YouTube. Shoot us the link. Send us the YouTube link of you asking your question to submit at GameBreaker.tv. We'll play it on the air. Um, so first up this week, this is from James Jenkins. He says, do you think Bioware will ever... Uh, oh, that's, that's the wrong one. Uh, is this it? Wait, nope, that's not it. I'm, I think I'm missing. All right, I'm missing that one. All right, hang on. J, uh, Jason Jenkins says, do you think Bioware will ever make a way, whether through a uh, cash shop or other means, for us to just level a character from 1 to 50 via the class quests alone? What do you think, Larry? Would they ever do something like that? Do I want them to do that? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, that would be so <laughs> awesome. Uh, but man, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to say that they would do something like that because I think, I don't know. I, I think, I, I think a lot of what, uh, Bioware is still holding on to is the time that it takes to level a new character. I think that that's just for whatever reason, they're still holding on. To, they still want people to experience the planetary quest again for some reason or another. I don't know why. But it would be, yeah, it would be awesome. I would, I would have, if I could do okay, it just you'd love it. Quest, do you think they would ever do it? You don't no. think it's going to happen? Laura, Not what do you think? Happen. I don't think that's ever going to happen. And I'm with Larry. I wish it would too, because I need to finish off 
three characters to be what would, what would, what would, the what would be the reason for them not to do that at this point what would be the what would be the downfall for them if players I think everyone would be bypassing the 200 plus hours per planet of story quests that they put in that you should yeah. want to do on honestly most planets towards the end have three stops and one single story arc for their uh for the uh you know the, the class quests so you have three stops on the planet the rest of it is side quests mm -hmm. all of them <laughs> the the you know however many it takes uh, i don't know i'd say let's throw out a number like 3 hours to to finish Bell Savage, would you say maybe less it's less than that but 2 hours let's say uh, 2 hours to finish Bell Savage. uh about 10 minutes of that is class quest <laughs> yeah yeah all right next well, up no, from james I would say wellington too far oh. in that travel, travel yeah, you do have travel time horrible. you do have travel time so, <laughs> trying to navigate anyway. through all the yeah, teleporters but yeah all right, next up from James Wellington. He says, with the Tauntaun mounts coming to SWOTOR, how excited are you guys and what other types of animals slash creatures would you like to see as mounts? What are you looking oh, for, Laura? Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I ooh, want ooh. that flying whale from Alderaan. Yes. <laughs> Especially if it flies. Those things are awesome. I have wanted that since the moment I set foot, and that is the only decent thing on that planet. <laughs> and a rank to ride on would be cool, too. Yeah, what about you, see, that's what I was all about. I was about the rank or. The Rancor mount would be awesome. That that's that's the way I'd go. I'm watching chat room and basically I'm I'm seeing mostly Rancor and, and Bantha. E well, somebody did say Ewok and Ewok mount. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that worked. I don't either. But Rancor, Rancor seems Ewoks. to be Rancor definitely seems to be winning in the chat room. That's for sure. So maybe we'll see that next. Yeah. Laura Williams, follow her on Twitter at Void Mix V O I D M Y N X. And of course, you can see her right here on The Republic every Monday at 6 PST. Go follow, go follow, go follow on the Twitter. Larry Everett, follow him on Twitter at Shadow, S H A A D D O E. And of course, go read the Hyperspace Beacon, which is on massively.com once a week. What do you write about this week? Uh, tomorrow, I'm talking about. I'm giving my, PV my 2013 PvP rant. There you go. Make sure yeah. to tune in for that one. Follow Larry on Twitter at Shadow. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon. Follow GameBreaker TV at GameBreaker TV. And make sure to check out CubeNation.tv, our brand new site we just launched today on Cube World. Even if you don't know what Cube World is, go on over and check it out. Tell us what you think. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. You tweet me at Gary Gannon and let me know what you think of the new website. So definitely looking for feedback. Uh, like I said, we do the show live every Monday at 6 PSTs. So come on over for the live show. And thanks so much for watching again. And we'll see you next week for more Republic.